Uh, today I want to talk about Wes Anderson. Are you a fan of Wes Anderson's? Do you like his movies? Do you find him pretentious? Uh, do you think all of his movies are too alike? A lot of people say these things about Wes Anderson, and that's just fine. I don't think it bothers him at all because he just continues to make what I consider very quality films. All right, starting out with number 10. Uh, I do enjoy all of these films. It's just that I enjoy some of them more than others, and that's why we do rankings. Let might have to revisit this in a year or two because that might change. But for right now, I'm going to say Moonrise Kingdom. Uh, this movie just didn't land. Uh, it didn't have the uh, warmth that some of his movies have. Um, I found myself not really paying attention the entire time. It just didn't really keep my attention. I have seen this a couple times. I have tried to like it more. Uh, but maybe I just wasn't in the right headspace at the time because I did watch it twice in the same year. Um, I do own it because I am a completionist fool. Uh, and Criterion puts out a good product, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy it. So Moonrise Kingdom, number 10. Number nine, people are going to freak out about this because this is a cult favorite. Uh, this is how I was introduced to Wes Anderson. Uh, this was his uh, first movie, and that is Bottle Rocket. So uh, this is a good movie. Um, however, this is a good first movie for sure. It stands head and shoulders above many other first-time filmmakers. Um, but, you know, it's got the Wilson brothers, so on and so forth. But the plot doesn't, again, doesn't really hold my attention a whole lot. Um, it doesn't have the quirkiness that Wes Anderson really uh, found later on in his filmmaking. And um, But I still did, when that came out, I did enjoy that. And it made me want to see whatever was coming up from him so I'm glad I saw it I'm glad I was introduced to it and I'm really glad somebody introduced me to it so remember it's good to introduce people to movies that's why we do these shows number eight um, the Darjeeling limited now this movie by a lot of people this is their favorite Wes Anderson movie um, the reason this movie is not my favorite uh, is or is lower on the list I should say is mostly because it's just super like I don't know it just kind of depressed me like this movie um, again didn't have the it had warmth I should say but it the it was very heavy and this is a movie I've only seen once so tell me if I should go see it again if I should watch it again I do own it I've owned it for a little while now so um, if I need to watch that again, if I'm just totally missing the boat on that, uh, I'm glad to watch it again if you guys think I should. Where are we? Number seven. Isle of Dogs. This movie, um, I like just fine. Uh, I, I think it's very creative. It has a lot of warmth. It's cute. You can watch it with the whole family. Not like all of the Wes Anderson movies. Uh, Wes Anderson really did bring his kind of style to the stop motion world uh, with this movie. The writing is very crisp, um, but it is not. It, the only reason it's so low on the list is it's just not one that I find myself pulling off the shelf enough to want to watch. I don't, you know, I'm glad I saw it. I appreciate it. It's just not one that I really feel like I want to watch a whole lot. Number six. The Fantastic Mr. Fox. I um, I like this movie a lot. This movie is very well made. Uh, this is Wes Anderson's uh, first foray into the animation stop motion world, and this this movie is it's a very short movie. It's only 87 minutes long, so you can watch this in no time. This is one you can watch with the kids. It's one that's very quotable. What the cuss? It's very quotable. It's very fun. But again, it's just not one that I gravitate towards whenever I'm just like going to watch a movie with friends or 
watch a movie by myself or uh, it just I don't know it's just one that I have to kind of be in the right mood to watch whereas these next few I really don't have to be in the right mood I can just watch them I love them so much this little movie that came out in 1998 and um, <laughs> Bill Murray was in it so I was stuck I also was coming off of Bottle Rocket and I was like man what is this so it was uh, Rushmore uh, this movie is fantastic. This movie is well acted. This movie is well written. Uh, this is one of his less whimsical movies, but you can start to see the flares of what will be Wes Anderson movies. So for those that say Wes Anderson movies are all just the same big, you know, set pieces that are very so This movie is very good, but this movie comes off as a pretentious art film, and it is to a certain degree, but this really does kind of thumb its nose at its self. So number three is, it's, it's hard for me to pick these out of these next three, but it came down to which one am I gonna pull off the shelf more? So all three of these could really be number one for one reason or the other. So I went by the criteria of which one am I gonna pull off the shelf more? And number three is Grand Budapest Hotel. I love this movie, I love the story, I love the uh, cinematography, which is, I know, very similar to all the cinematography in Wes Henderson films. He likes to cram everything right in the center of the screen, which I, I appreciate. It, it, it's really quirky and fun to me, but um, also the color scheme of this movie, the set pieces, the acting, uh, just everything. I love the soundtrack. I, I love everything about Grand Budapest Hotel. And if you get a chance, uh, grab the Criterion version of this because they have a lot of good special features that really go back behind the scenes and show you how this film was made, which is very interesting and actually makes the movie even more so entertaining. It's already entertaining in its own right, um, but it really just takes it to the next level. Number two for me. Now, this movie is one of my most quotable films in my collection. I love this movie. Uh, it was made in 2001. It's not even two hours long. Um, it's a beautiful movie. It has a cast of many faces that you recognize. Um, and it really did make me appreciate Mr. Gene Hackman even more. Uh, the Royal Tenenbaums. I love this movie. I think this movie is hilarious. It's very dry, but um, I actually enjoyed Gwyneth Paltrow in this movie. I thought she was pretty good in this movie, and she's usually not my favorite. But um, again, the Wilson brothers, this one just really solidified things for me uh, with Wes Anderson. I was like, all right, I'm interested in whatever this guy decides to do. So you have to know what number one is by now. Um, this movie uh, is hated by many, hated by many, and that is uh, The Life Aquatic with uh, Steve Zissou. I don't know how you couldn't find this movie hilarious. This movie is uh, one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. It's also one of the most heartfelt, warm movies I've ever seen. Uh, it has a great soundtrack, which I, I do own on vinyl. And I highly recommend uh, this this movie. The performances in this movie are fantastic. Um, I will tell you, I went on a date when I first saw this movie. I was a young person and went on one of my first dates, and um, we, we didn't go on a second date. She did not like this movie, and she judged me for liking this movie, and I judged her for not liking this movie. There's my Wes Anderson picks, my ranking, which I think it's silly to rank stuff, but um, I truly do love all of these movies. Let me know if I should uh, possibly watch one or the other more, if I should pull them off the shelf a little bit more and give them more of a chance. Moonrise Kingdom, Dark Jeeling Limited. Um, are those ones that are your favorites and why? Let me know your list down below. Thanks so much for tuning in.